Hey, what's happening? I'm Claudio, and today I'm going to show you the steps that I took to get rid of our junky old carpet and linoleum and lay down some great looking tile. If you want to see what I did, stick around. Let's make it now. This is just a recap from the first video showing the old brown carpet in the vanity and closet area and how I removed the aged linoleum from the shower and toilet room. Once the floor was down to nothing but the plywood subfloor, I swept and vacuumed to make sure it was free of debris. I measured out the dimensions for the quarter inch cement backer board that would go on the floor. After cutting the sheets to size, I laid them out on the floor. Again, I took the same steps in the other room to make sure there was nothing between the backer board and the subfloor. In this room, I could lay out some full sheets. The goal is to have as short of joints as possible, so I staggered the full sheets and made some cuts. Where necessary, I notched out sections to fit around corners. At this point, it's nothing but a dry fit. I just laid down the backer boards until the floor was completely covered. I chose to use a modified thin set to prevent any cracking down the road. I added water and then poured in the mortar until it was just the right consistency. I followed the directions on the bag. To make mixing easier, I used one of these spiral concrete mixers attached to a drill. It makes quick work of the job. I took the mortar inside and removed the first sheet. I began by slopping the mortar down onto the floor and then spreading it out. I spread the thin set first and then straightened out the notched lines afterward. I realized I needed to install this other sheet first since it had to slip under the bump out for the closet. Once the boards were down, I walked around on them to make sure there was a good bond to the subfloor. To lock them in place, I used inch and a quarter galvanized roofing nails and drove them in roughly every 12 inches. I continued the same process for the rest of the room. Lay down some thin set, smash it down, and drive in some nails. I had to remove this far sheet first since it was notched around the other side of the closet. And then again, put down all the nails to lock the sheets in place. The whole process did take a little bit of time, but it wasn't difficult. It's one of those quick transformation steps that are extremely satisfying. I moved into the smaller room to finish up the cement backer board installation. Using an old chalk line I inherited from my wife's grandfather, I marked a line that was in the center of the doorway. This would make the tile visually symmetrical as you come in the room. We tried out a few different tile patterns, but ultimately decided on straight herringbone. I laid out all the tiles working from the back of the room to make sure I had a full tile front and center. I also didn't want some weird sizes around the perimeter. It took some time to get all adjusted and marked down, but it's worth it. Once I was sure where to start, I plopped down the mortar for the first tile and set it in place. To get the best results, I pulled the notched lines in one direction and then rocked the tile back and forth in the other. This collapses all the lines down and gives the best possible connection. I continued adding thin set and smashing down the tiles. Since these tiles at 12 by 24 inches were pretty big, I used a wide 3 8 inch spacing. I took the process slow and methodically, but the hardest part was just getting the pattern right. And here's where the process broke down. Coming around this corner made me mess up the tile pattern. Luckily, I realized it only after a few tiles and fixed it right away. Now that all the large tiles were in place in this room, I added the smaller pieces along the walls. I went back to the larger room and filled in some more of the puzzle pieces. I had already pre-cut all the thin pieces for the perimeter, and now just lifted each one up and put it in place. This was already the next day so I could move around on the other tiles. I put these tiles down last because I wanted to get the waterproofing membrane under the tile first. I'll show that waterproofing step in another video. This is what the tile looked like after the whole room was laid, but before the grout. I started grouting in the back corner, spreading it down over the tiles. It's important to smash the grout down into the joints as much as possible. The steps are to lay down the grout into the joints with a float at a 45 degree angle, and then come back and drag the float at a 90 degree angle to remove the excess. After letting the grout set up for a little while, I came back with a bucket of warm water and a sponge to clean up any grout that was on top of the tile and not in the joints. And here's the finished product, a brand new floor. Before calling it done, I added a shiny new coat of grout and tile sealer. Well, another step of the process done. With the floors completed, I can make the bathroom a lot more functional by adding things in like the toilet, vanity, and closets. But that's for another video. If you like this project, let me know about it in the comments below. 
I've made plenty other videos you can watch, most of them having nothing to do with this bathroom. You can find those on my YouTube channel or on my website at makeitnow.tv. If you want to see what I'm currently up to, you can follow me on social media at Make It Now Channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.